Hey everybody, this is Matt. Sorry for the weird camera angle, but I've got to get in close for this video. And I'm going to be using the thunder rods for this video as well, because with the camera close in, sticks are too loud. Um, but in this video lesson, I'm going to be uh, teaching you about ghost notes. And I'm um, not sure if all of you have ever heard of ghost notes, or the term ghost note, but it's basically a very quiet note that's inserted in between uh, the main hits that you do here. Um, it's it's more prominent in shuffle type feels and it usually comes on the middle triplet note. Triplet, 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 on the puh. Triplet, 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 okay? It's just a soft note. Uh, but most of these, um, the examples I'm going to be showing you today are from Rod Morgenstein, the drummer for the Dixie Dregs and the Steve Morse Band, and he's done numerous other projects as well. One of my all-time favorite drummers, especially in the ghost note area. The, when I first heard him, I was in high school, and I was just blown away at all these little notes I was hearing. Um, so I'm going to be showing you some of his examples, but I'm going to start off with probably the most famous ghost note beat of all time, which is uh, the late Jeff Beccaro, uh, also you know, one of my favorite drummers, um, the beat from Toto's uh, Rosanna, their big hit Rosanna. And it starts off with that, that shuffle feel. And the basic beat without the ghost note is... Oh, there I am trying to play the ghost note. Without the ghost note, it's... You know, that sort of thing. Just a shuffle. But when you put the ghost note in, in the middle note of the triplet, it sounds like this. fills in the holes a lot and um, you know like I said it's in the middle triplet note triple 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 it's on the pa triple 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 okay that's how you would practice that I guess if you wanted to practice it slow it's in, it occurs in the middle of the triplet all right another famous example well, two famous examples is a double bass shuffle. Uh, one is from Simon Phillips uh, in Jeff Beck's Space Boogie, where he does a 7-8 double bass shuffle with ghost notes. And the one that really turned me on to ghost notes is uh, Rod Morgenstein in, uh, from the Steve Morse Band, uh, the album the Introduction, their opening song called Cruise Missile. It kicks off with this really, really neat sounding double bass shuffle. And I'll just uh, play that slowly for you. The uh, on the ride cymbal, it's just your basic jazz ride cymbal pattern. Okay. So that's the right hand. The feet are just, just kind of shuffling along. The snare is on two and four, but once again, what Rod Morgenstein does is he inserts that ghost note in the middle triplet right before four. So the basic beat is that. We had the ghost note in. the end result. Okay. Yeah. I may have said uh, the middle triplet before four. It's actually the middle triplet before two and four where the snare actually hits the backbeat. Okay? That's the 4-4 version. The 7-8 version that Simon Phillips did, it's a little busier. It's more like, uh, let's see if I can even play it. Something like that. Slow it down. Okay, that's a very busy beat. But you get the idea of what ghost notes can do in a, in a beat. Um, Something else that I like to work on, something that's kind of reminiscent of Neil Peart, but also incorporates the Rod Morgenstein ghosting thing. You can get just a, you know, one, two, three, four going on the, uh, between the kick and the hi-hat, but you can, you can kind of bounce around the kit while ghosting with your left hand. And this also uh, sort of has a triplet feel as well, kind of a...
something like that. Just okay, I'm constantly ghosting with my left hand. Okay, and then one last thing I want to show you. And I'm not sure if I can even explain how to do this, but it does sound neat, and it really, you can, uh, you can see how ghost notes can really add a lot to a, you know, what would be a rather simple beat otherwise. But this is, this is also an example from one of Rob Morgenstein's instructional videos. This is what, um, something he called a linear beat, where you only hit one drum at a time. And the beat goes something like this. The left hand's constantly busy while ghosting. sped up, this is how fast he does it. Okay, something like that. It's on a linear beat. And, and again, I'm not sure if I can even explain to you. You may have to get some drum taps for that one, but it really shows you how a simple, just light tapping with your with your left hand can really fill in those holes and come out with a really, really cool sounding beat. Um, so that's all, That's about all I have for you today on the ghost notes. Um, I hope you're able to learn something from this vid. It's, again, it's something that's kind of hard to, it's hard to explain. It's almost like you just have to hear it and just, just practice it slowly. You know, just practice uh, triplets especially, just Okay, that's a, that's a good way to practice. And uh, one more thing, if you want to practice just straight beats, uh, forget the triplet, just straight beats, you can, um, you can play a you know, traditional rock pattern, but keep, a, a keep your ghost hand ghosting the whole time. Okay, and you can add in some double ghost notes. That's it. Um, yeah, once again, I hope you learned something from this, and um, we will see you next time. Thanks.